Okay, let's begin. So today we're learning our next level of sentences. This is termed as sentences level four. Um, and we're looking at some a new structure today, obviously. Uh, we call them preloading modifying phrases. So you can tell right there by the title that we're looking at a little clip of language that comes at the beginning of a sentence. It preloads the sentence. It modifies the idea that's coming uh, in the main part of your sentence, and it's a phrase. So it, it's not going to be a complete clause on its own. It's a very short chunk of language, and you'll notice that they're not complete ideas on their own. They're just used as linking tools. Essentially, that's another name for them. Um, and they, they're very helpful as well for writing cohesively. And cohesive writing is really important when you're looking at uh, larger bodies of work like S like essays. So as we're moving into the essay format, um, these little clips of language or these little chunks of language or these modifying phrases, depending on how you want to uh, term them, those are all different synonyms that we will use for this type of writing structure. Um, they become very important because they help us to guide our readers and they help us to join our ideas together um, seamlessly. So we've got a little bit of a motivational phrase at the bottom here. Let's start our sentences with force. Okay, let's jump straight into the main body. Okay, first of all, we've done a very basic definition, but let's take a little bit more time to flesh out what we actually mean by this acronym PLMPs. So these are modifying phrases, and as you can guess by the terminology of preloading, we're going to place them so they actually get placed initially in our sentences. Um, they're always going to come at the beginning, and again, as we've already mentioned, they're used to link our ideas together. So there's actually a whole bunch of different ways that we can use this type of connective writing. Um, but we're going to focus on four of them, and I call them PLMP A, B, C, and D. And we'll learn the formulas for these little uh, linking phrases, and we'll actually practice some identification in this uh, presentation. Okay, so as we should also note here, these are used to link our ideas together. So that means that we can actually add them to any of our existing sentence formulas. So you could use a simple sentence, compound, complex A, complex B, academic, um, you know, complex compound, whatever you want in terms of the, the idea coming afterwards, we can always add a PLMP to the beginning of that uh, formula without altering the grammatical correctness of the following idea. Um, and again, they're used, as I've been kind of hammering this point even initially here, they're used to link well, one idea with another idea. So it's a way for us to, to glue the entire paragraph and essay together. Okay, so another important note in terms of our punctuation here, um, we have our preloading modifying phrase, and then there's always going to be a comma linking it into the rest of our main idea or our sentence. So, therefore, we can understand where the acronym comes from now. We've got preloading, it comes at the beginning of the sentence. Modifying, it's going to tell us more about the relationship between the ideas that are kind of surrounding it. Um, and they are phrases, they're not complete clauses, and we will need a comma to link them in. So now we understand uh, this little uh, specialized vocabulary jargon, if you would, that I've added um, into my teaching formulas. We call it the PLMP. Okay, so let's now take a look at some of the specific um, formulas that we'll be working with here. So again, I mentioned there's four of them, and it all comes down to what the initial uh, piece of the puzzle is. So first of all, we've got PLMP A. And in terms of a formula, the, the very basic generic formula is you have the, the PLMP marker, the comma, and then you go into C1. Now again, remember, in place of where I'm putting that first clause, you could have any type of sentence um, coming after this little unit. So specifically, if we look at the details of what comes within a PLMPA, you're going to have a verb, but it's going to be uh, in its infinitive form. Now, an infinitive verb is a verb that is 
remaining in its most basic format, which means we haven't changed it into tense. We haven't we haven't done anything with it at all. So I call it the metaphor I use. It's brand new. It's still inside the box. We haven't taken it out of the box yet. It's in its infinitive form, which means it'll always have two in front of it. So to walk, to run, to think, to crystallize, to clarify. Those are all verbs in their infinitive form. So we have our infinitive verb, and then we will have it joined to either a a noun phrase is the most common, but it could also have a prepositional phrase as part of this formula. Then we have our comma, and then it goes straight into our main sentence. So let's see an example here. To empower our sentences, comma, so that is our PLMP. Notice the verb is in its infinitive form, to empower. And then we've got our noun phrase here, our sentences. So it's again, it's linking, it's guiding, it's telling us that we're going to be talking about uh, what what we're doing to make our sentences stronger. So it's, it is preloading the, the reader here and telling them we're going to talk more about this idea in the following clause. So then we have our comma and then we move into the main sentence. We can add PLMPs to the front of them. A bit of a meta sentence. It's talking about what we're talking about. So it's meta. Okay, so let's move to the next formula here. PLMP B comma C1. So this, if you look at the details of this particular formula. We have our verb in the ing form um, and then again you'll notice it pretty much mirrors the uh, first one that we learned in the fact that you'll then join it, you'll join that ing verb to a, a noun phrase and there could also be a prepositional phrase here. Then we have our comma and then you move into your main sentence. So let's let us let us check an example here seeing the change of weather. So this one is, this one actually does include the optional um, prepositional phrase. It doesn't have to be there, but it's, it's, it could be there without altering negatively the, the, the grammatical structure of this unit. Um, so seeing the change of weather, comma, that's our PLMPB. Notice the verb is in its ing form. Then we've got a, a noun phrase, the change, and then we've got our optional prepositional phrase here of weather. Seeing the change of weather, comma, we geared up and headed for Benson. So again, the phrase, the PLMPB, is preparing the reader and giving some information to help preload the reader for what comes up in the main clause. But what you're also doing here is you're, you're guiding your reader, you're giving them a little bit more information, you're creating a little bit of suspense, but the main idea is the one that follows in the main clause. So don't forget that that's our more important idea here. These are just little chunks of language we use to introduce, to create suspense, um, and to link ideas together. Pushing on, PLMPC, comma, C1. This is the simplest of the, of the four formulas we will learn, and it's just a very short clip of language in the form of a prepositional phrase. As you can see there, PP stands for prepositional phrase, and then a comma, and then we move into C1. Now remember, any sentence formula could go in that in that spot. So you could have a compound sentence there, you could have an academic sentence there, complex A, whatever you want. Okay, example, in the morning, comma, I brush my hair and teeth, period. So again, you can see that what we have here is a very short chunk of language, just three uh, words, but it's in the form of a prepositional phrase. It does give us some guidance. It tells us more information. It's preloading the following idea, right? It tells us the frame of time. And quite often that's what prepositional phrases will be used for. They can be used to describe time, location, um, degree of an event or of completing something. Um, so there we go. That's our third example. Okay, next we're moving into the final formula. This one is the most complex of them. Um, we call it PLMPD. Again, it's got a comma, then we move into our main clause. Now the details, or the guts as I like to call it here, we'll start with a preposition, then we add an ing verb, and then we have either the optional noun phrase or prepositional phrase, then the comma. So you can see that's quite a bit going on there, so it is quite a long version of a PLMP. And then we have C1. So let's see here, by talking through their problem. So again, there's no, like if we, if we were to try to have that idea stand on its own, it doesn't have its own main verb. It doesn't have its own uh, subject. So it, it, is just, it is just a way of preparing the reader for the main idea that comes next, right? Um, but we'll notice by, that's a preposition, talking, that's an ing verb, and then we've got 
through their problem. That's another prepositional phrase, by talking through their problem. So in this case, it's preposition plus ing plus prepositional phrase, and then our comma, and then we move into the main idea. They came up with a solution. Okay, so we've got four different new uh, tools, if you would, to add into our writer's toolkit. These are all short clips of language or short chunks of language that we use to preload our main sentences. So let's take a look at some uh, uh, identification here. So you're going to look at a sentence. I'll actually read the sentence out. Um, then there'll be a chance for you to pause the video at a certain point, and you're going to try to um, decide which of these it is. Is it, is it a PLMP A, B, C, or D? So it's just some initial practice to see how well you're absorbing the content here. Okay, example one, thinking about the deal, comma, Philip decided to buy the car. What type of PLMP is this? Number two, to clarify the issue, comma, I had to ask many questions. Okay, again, we'll be giving you the answer in a second here. So what type of PLMP is this? Number three, through discussing their options, comma, they came up with the best plan. For dinner, they had duck and it was delicious. And finally, to empower his students, comma, he taught them editing skills because they would write essays. So one thing you'll notice is 